everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at updating our rooted Pixel 2 and 2XL to the January update for 2020. Now I know I haven't done one of these in a long time for the Pixel 2, but the last time we did, we used TWRP to flash Magisk. But it's come to my knowledge through comments and other means that TWRP isn't really working well on Android 10, or well, it's becoming unusable. So we'll be taking a look at using Magisk Manager to patch the stock boot image in order to update our phone and keep root access. Today we'll be using the factory image and using Magisk Manager to patch the stock boot image. So to start, we need to download a few things. So let's head over to our computer here. And the first thing we want to download is the latest version of the SDK platform tools. Now, all you have to do is come to this link and click on the one for your operating system, agree with the terms and conditions and click on the blue download link and make sure you save everything in one folder so we can easily access them all. Uh, so this is just ADB and Fastboot, these programs we use to communicate with our phone. And the next thing we want to download is the latest factory image for the Pixel 2. So on the right hand side, we can go and select Walleye for Pixel 2. And of course, if you have the 2XL, select the latest one for the 2XL. And it looks like here, if we scroll down, we have the January one. So let's click on the blue download link and save that in the same folder as our SDK platform tools. And last but not least, and you should already have this installed on your phone, is the latest version of Magisk Manager. So make sure you have this on your phone installed and we should be ready to go. But once you have these two files downloaded, I have everything downloaded here and I already have Magisk installed on my phone. Let's start extracting a few things here. So let's open up the platform tools. And if you already have used this before, just make sure they're the latest version. And uh, I'll show you how to check that soon. Uh, let's extract the whole platform tools folder outside into the Android folder and close this. And now let's also open up the factory image here and open up the folder inside the factory image. And then from there, we just want to extract the bootloader, image and radio files here. These three files, extract those. Might take a little bit, they're quite large. So the next thing we need to do is to go inside the platform tools folder and then go into the address bar here. We're going to type in CMD and this will open up a new command prompt window with the uh, directory already changed to the platform tools. So if we run something like fastboot, we'll be able to run that. And if we run ADB, it will also be able to run that program. So it will be able to run any program inside this folder, which is exactly what we need. But I'll be using my console emulator. It just uh, makes it easier to zoom in and out. Now that we have the command prompt window open, all you need to do is go back to the main Android folder where everything else is. And I forgot to do one thing. We need to open up the image zip file that we extracted from the factory image. You need to open that up and you'll see a boot.img file. Let's extract that image outside just like that. Okay, and that's all we need to do on our computer. Uh, we need to do a few things on our phone before we start. So let's head back there. And the first thing is we'll be using USB debugging, uh, but this allows the computer to use ADB commands. You may have used it before. So if you go to your developer options, which you should have enabled, uh, which I don't for some reason. So let's just enable that. Go to about phone, tap on the build number seven times, type in your pin pattern or passcode to enable the developer options. Then go to system, advanced, and then to developer options. And you wanna scroll down here. I would make sure that this is unchecked, the automatic system updates, and scroll down here to enable USB debugging. Hit okay, and then you can go back home. And now let's plug in our USB cable to our device. So I'll be using ADB to copy the files to and from our phone. It is a little bit faster for me. But if you want, you can still use the, um, you know, charging this USB device and then change it to file transfer, but we can use ADB or USB debugging. Okay, so let's copy the stock boot image to our phone so we can get Magisk to patch the image for us. So let's go to our computer here. We'll have both on the screen. And in our command prompt window, let's type in ADB devices. Hit enter and that should start up the ADB daemon. And on your phone, you should see something to allow USB debugging. And you can see on our command prompt, it says unauthorized. So what you need to do here is check this box so you don't have to get prompted every time and then tap on allow. And if we go back to our computer and press the up arrow key to run the same command, you can see that our device is now connected under device, which is good. And to check which version of the ADB platform tools, sorry, the Android platform tools uh, that you have here, you can type in ADB double dash version. And that will show you the ADB bridge version. And of course the version of the ADB executable, 
and this is the latest version as of today. So if you have a newer one, that's cool. And this is where it is running from. So if you're ever confused about, oh, how come it's not the same version, you might have had it installed in two different places. So keep an eye on that. What we can do here is now copy this boot image to our phone's SD card. So let's do that. Let's type in adb push. We want to push this file, so drag in the boot image. And if you can't drag in the boot image for whatever reason, you can hold shift and right click on the image that or file that you need and then select copy as path down here. Click on that and in your command prompt window, you can just right click to paste in the location of the image. And once you've done that, we can type in forward slash SD card forward slash and hit enter. And that'll transfer the file to our phone where we'll be able to use Magisk to patch it. So let's open up Magisk Manager. Everything is okay here. So let's tap on install, tap on install again. And we're going to select the option to select and patch a file. And you also want to check here that you have the internal storage uh, shown here. So mine's currently shown, so it says hide here. This allows you to access the uh, internal storage of your phone. And we'll just find the boot image, which is here. I'm going to tap on that and it's going to download Magisk and patch the boot image and RAM disk to include Magisk. So that's how we're going to root our phone here. This shouldn't take too long, as you can see, it's done already. And this is where it's located. So I'm going to pretty much type this location in on our command prompt window, and we'll be able to take this file and put it onto our computer. So let's do that now. Let's type in adb pull. We want to get something from our phone. Then we type in the location of the file that's on our phone. So it's located in the SD card in our download folder with a capital D, and it's named magisk underscore patched dot img. Leave a space after that. And after that space, put in two dots. And the two dots represents the parent directory. So this is our current directory, and the parent of this is the Android folder. This is where everything else is. So if we press enter on this, we should see the image appear, and it has, so that's good. We'll keep an eye on that. We'll need to use that a little bit later, but now we are going to update our phone. So before you do so, I recommend that you back up everything that you might need, photos, videos, app data through your favorite Android backup manager, and also, I recommend that you disable any modules that may affect the phone's boot up, such as Ed Expose or other system related modules. Uh, if you have the Active Edge module installed, don't worry about that. It'll disable itself automatically if it doesn't match the same version that it has. But since I don't have any modules here or any at all, let's reboot our phone into the bootloader so we can begin the updating process. So tap on restart and then hold the volume down button until you get into the bootloader. Okay, that took a while and uh, our phone is just in the bootloader now. This is what it usually looks like. So let's go ahead and type in our first command here. Let's type in fastboot devices. And you may have guessed that this will return the device's serial number if it's connected in fastboot, and it is, so we can continue from there. So first up is we need to flash the new bootloader image. So let's type in fastboot flash bootloader. Leave a space after that. Drag in the bootloader image or use the copy as path method and hit enter. And this will update the bootloader. And once that is done, let's reboot the phone back into the bootloader. So we're using the new bootloader. So let's type in fastboot reboot bootloader, hit enter. And we'll wait for our phone to get back in there. And that's good. Let's flash the updated radio slash uh, baseband image. So let's type in fastboot flash radio. Leave a space off the radio and drag in the radio image. Hit enter. This will do the same thing and let's reboot our phone back into the bootloader. You can hit the up arrow key on your keyboard to repeat previous commands, so that's useful. And once we're back into the bootloader again, we're going to flash the magisk, oh sorry, the image zip file. And this will update our phone with all the new images that are inside. So let's type in fastboot double dash skip dash up uh, reboot. Type in update and leave a space after update and then drag in the image zip file and hit enter. Now this will check that your radio and bootloader images are up to date. It will start extracting everything onto the computer and then it'll flash everything one by one. And that skip reboot flag that we put in here will prevent the phone from automatically restarting because this is what the update command usually does because we want to flash our magisk underscore patched boot image here so we can keep root after updating. So let's wait for this to go. Should only take about a minute or two. And then after that, we'll be able to reroute our phone. Okay, so now we're done with that. Let's flash the uh, patched image here. So let's type in fastboot flash boot. 
leave a space after boot and drag in the magic underscore patched image and hit enter. Great, so now that we've done here, let's reboot our phone into Android. So why don't we press the power button with the, sol the start selected, hit that and we should reboot into Android and hopefully everything will work just fine and that we'll also be able to keep root access. But now that our phone has booted up, let's put in our pin here. Everything looks good. We can uh, see that we're finishing the system update here. And this is the new January build number. So let's check out Magisk Manager and see that we are still rooted here. Okay, there we go. That's good. So that's it for updating your rooted Pixel 2 to the latest security update using Magisk Manager to patch the stock boot image. And if you have any other questions, feel free to leave it down below. I'll be more than happy to help out there. Uh, but even better yet, please join us on Discord. It's much easier to keep track of conversations and to share screenshots and even talk in person if that's what you need. So thanks for watching, guys, and as always, happy flashing.